Hey everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic back again. It's green because it's time for another exciting edition of Nine Pitches. First of all, I'd like to introduce my co-guests, co-presenters. Kests. Kests on Ooh. this lovely edition of Nine Pitches. First of all, we have Tom stepping in for Ross. Is it green because it's inexperienced? Possibly. Oh. oh. Is this your first ever one? No. Oh, I was going to say. No, I've Surely not. I just think in general, is it inexperienced? Oh. <laughs> You've done loads. Oh, oh I've done at least... Oh, okay. You, you're well versed in it. And Andrew as well. Hello. 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 Um, I, I guess I'll explain the format. If anybody's tuning in for the first time, it's nine pitches. We all have three each. Uh, the way it goes is that Tom will make his first pitch, then Andrew, then myself. We'll go around three times. That'll leave us with nine lovely pitches. But remember that most golden of rules. It's not what we think's going to happen. It's, it's what, what we want to happen. It's what we want to happen. Sorry, Absolutely. I'm on a delay. That's all right. Um, <laughs> It's full gear this mm. weekend, gents. Uh, it's very exciting. Whoa. There's some big matches on the show. There's some smaller matches on the show as well, but it, it looks pretty packed as it stands. And mm. at the time of recording as well, we are yet to have this week's Go Home, uh, Go Home Dynamite too, so there could even be more added, and I suspect there will be. Um, we're going to come up with three pitches each for full gear, and we're going to start with Tom Campbell. What is your first pitch, please? Uh, my first pitch is around the AEW Women's Championship match. Okay. Between Dr. Britt Baker and Tay Conti. Tay Conti. Um, I want Tay Conti to have a tooth pulled out. Oh, Ooh. no. We're straight in. We're, we're going in bold. We chose wow. violence this yeah, morning. Because uh, Dr. Britt Baker is a dentist. Dimmed. And uh, I don't think we've done enough dentisty things okay. with Dr. Mm. Britt Baker. And I feel like this is a, an opportunity here with someone like Ty Conti, who does such, have such a lovely face and a lovely smile, for Britt Baker to go, I want to ruin that smile. So you can do it. So have Dr. Britt Baker win, because I feel like Dr. Britt Baker is going to win this anyway, and the title reign continues. But post-match, she could pull out a set of pliers. <sighs> And in the hopes of ruining the sweet smile of Ty Conti, Ty Conti pulls a tooth out. You can Ooh. do it with special Ooh. effects. And it doesn't stuff. need to mm. actually be real. It doesn't need to actually pull a tooth out. You can do it with special effects. And then, like, because she's a dentist, Dr. Britt Baker could do a Dan House and then start collecting teeth from oh. her opponents. Pitches! Oh. Ross is oh, off this nice. week. I just, I, that's my pitch. What do we think, that's, everybody? That is brutal. <laughs> that is very <laughs> brutal. That is a pitch. Um, what would then happen afterwards? Would Conti get revenge so at some point? You could do a Conti gets it. Yeah, you could have it so Conti takes some time away, then comes back. Obviously, the tooth won't grow back. You could have some fun either with uh, special effects, have like a little bit like a black mark so it looks like the tooth is missing, or come back with like a gold plate on the tooth or whatever. So you have a little bit of that. You know, and you could you could even have a match where they have a rematch, and maybe Ty tries to do the same thing to Brit. Well, Ooh. it reminded this reminded me this pitch of an episode of The Ultimate Fighter. Oh, nice! UK versus USA. It was many years ago. Now I was at school watching The Ultimate Fighter, which is like a mixture between Big Brother and fighting. Um, <laughs> Big Brother sometimes is fighting. Yes, mm. and then the winner gets a UFC contract and stuff. But this was well, team... Big Brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this was Team UK versus Team USA. I wonder what Craig went on to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, the American team, they had one lad who was like bragging about how he was going to knock the British guy's teeth out. And mm. I think he even had a razor blade tattooed on his elbow. Because he, um, he had sharp elbows. But he was saying, I'm going to knock this guy's teeth out. They come to the match against each other. The British guy knocks his teeth out. So maybe oh. Brits... I think he need him and his tooth got stuck in his mouth God, it was really brutal Damn. only a bit less brutal than Tom's pitch I mean the other way you could do it is have it so Britt Baker has a move that is designed to knock a tooth oh the pliers out. are very mm. visceral but I feel like the pliers are a nice visual metaphor I like that. you know for afterwards I think there's something and it just kind of because you know Dr. Britt Baker is she baby face is she heel she kind of floats uh, on mm. either side this I feel way. like this firmly establishes uh, a side of the fence that she falls on as a heel yeah. if she holds if, you know if she gets Gets Jamie Hayter and and and, and Reba to hold to uh, Reba to hold to uh, her there and just boom. Oh. yeah, and that reaction. Oh. That, that reaction. Would, that would be a good reaction. Part of me also wants to kind of see you know back in the day when they did Blade and you could clearly see somebody on the floor doing that. <laughs> Part of me wants to see Tay go down and then just like color a tooth in with some <laughs> felt pen or something like that. Uh, I think that's an awesome pitch, and right. I think that just adds a little bit more legitimacy to Britt Baker as well. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. It's a yes from me as well. Thank you, I Jack. I think it's excellent. It's very brutal. Mm. We all we all went, oh, which is the, the desired effect. Uh, I think, I'm guessing it will be done 
in the moment, kind of similarly to the Batista Triple H nose ring. Yeah. Switcheroo. Yeah, I think do it that way. Yeah. Again, because you do it post-match, there is some jiggery-pokery you can do mm. to to make it look brutal but not hurt Ty yeah. Conti. No, I like mm. it. It's a yes for me as well. Yay! What a start! Whoa. What a start. Tom Campbell chooses violence <laughs> on nine pitches. Andrew, what have you chosen? It might dip after this one because okay. I feel like it could be a little bit controversial. I'm so excited for Andrews because Andrews are like war and peace. The, no, I've, I've just been that. looking at your <laughs> sheet compared to... <laughs> My slither of paper and then I've got three like lines on. Two bits here. I'll try and condense I'm it just, a little bit at least. I'm just free for, I'm like jazz. It's look just at free that. form. I just don't mind. <laughs> Is this um, the condensed version? That, well, I'm going to try and condense oh, it a little right. bit more. That's the thing. Okay, so... You do you, hun. It's going to be probably a bit controversial, but I kind of really want Eddie Kingston to absolutely beat the plops out of CM Punk. Oh. Beat the plops out of CM Punk in very quick fashion. Ooh. I don't think we necessarily see a long match happen here, but somewhere down the road. So my basic pitch is that. But there's a lot, I, I mean, there's there's a reason as to why okay. I want this to happen. So in Kings, all of Kingston's big matches, it feels like he never he never gets the win. But that's kind of like the charm of Eddie Kingston, right? Is the he's the up, he's the underdog. He's the one you want to root behind. He's just this fighting guy who always gets back up no matter what. And like that's well and good, I think, for a certain amount of time. And then I think he needs to start picking up some wins to have some real solid legitimacy in AEW. So I kind of want it to be like, he beat CM Punk in a very like, in CM Punk's UFC way of him just getting battered within oh. minutes. Like, like Eddie Kingston is fired up, he's ready to fight, and he's gonna show it. He can, he can go with the top boys, he can go with the top boys. And then, I guess more of my pitch is kind of after the fact is that I think I want this to trigger something in Punk and then the following weeks after Full Gear, like Punk's music plays, but he never actually comes out to the ring. Um, and then eventually one week he does, and everyone thinks it's going to be like that regular, you know, the Punk punk comes out and he says, I love this town, I love this crowd, uh, and then leaves the ring. But it's not. He like comes out and then he starts berating the crowd, uh, blaming them for turn him in so turning him soft and losing his edge and everything. And remembering that it wasn't the crowd rallying behind him that once made him the best in the world, but it's his wrestling acumen. Oh. Um, and then the adoration blinded him, but now he can see clearly, you know, once to prove he hasn't lost his edge by facing, facing Kingston in a rematch. And then I think it's the second match down the line that is the proper barn burner match. Uh, and that's the pit, that's the first one. Who wins the second match? Not that it's part of your pitch, but if it were, who would win the second match? That's a good question as well. Perhaps even perhaps Kingston again Whoa. to like further get Punk being like, oh, mm. I'm a mad boy, you know, <laughs> get some sort of visceralness well. out of Punk because <laughs> I I like I enjoy seeing Punk back in the ring as I think everybody does, but I, for me personally, him coming out and always being like, this Sorry, town's the best town. Way louder than I thought. That's it was all right. Sorry. He's like, this town's the best town, and everyone gets behind him. Like we've had that for a good few months now. At this point, and I swap think... it for this town's the worst yeah, town. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but 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 have some kind of like storyline reason behind that, not just like a generic heel turn kind of thing. Because I think Punk's much more nuanced and a lot more clever than just doing it in some basic way. So maybe mm. this is kind of the way to like push that forward a little bit. I think that um I think I think that some of the points you hit on there is true in the sense that like CM Punk does come out and go, hey here, what a lovely place. Mm. Like when ready now. Is anyone to sick get... of this? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Of course <laughs> they're not they're not gonna say they are because it's CM Punk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of course yeah. they're yeah. not. It's of course they're not. But it's uh, but I think we're ready for some meat on the bone now mm. with CM Punk. Mm -hmm. I want like like AEW got, have done a great job of getting all these great players onto the board yeah. right now. Now would they do things? No, it's not enough to go, they're here and they're having a match against this. Mm. I want some storylines between these people. I want CM Punk to, you know, he's had some, some short burst bits with yeah. like Team Taz and, and Darby Allen, but nothing like really mm. 
like not a long story. Nothing yeah, long, yeah. yeah. They've got they've got their eggs. They've got the flour. It's yeah. time, time to make a wrestling Ooh, cake. No, Betty Crocker. That was the most Alan Partridge thing. <laughs> <laughs> make a lovely wrestling cake. <laughs> yeah. We're baking us a cake that you've never seen before. <laughs> um, I, yeah. So I like him, and and, it, and if anyone's going to do anything with with punk, that's going to be a little bit more long term. Why not Eddie mm. Kingston? Mm. And and, and the the fact that Kingston beating Punk kind of to kind of starts putting the doubt in Punk's mind because mm. Kingston's going to this. Did you see the interview that he did? Yeah, that did oh. the rounds. Just like a guy who's just like, I was so ready to good. sell my gear to to make ends meet, and now oh, I've got the, a contract. Um, the players' tribute, tribute, mm. tribute. Mm. The article, yeah, it was yeah. so good. Yeah, and it, so it just and it kind of adds to that story for it adds to that match for Sunday, which is a guy who like was ready just to, he was wrestling in Newcastle two years ago. Mm. Yeah, he thought that was his last tour. Yeah. He thought wow. that was it pretty much, yeah. That's why I lost to Rory Coyle. Uh, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that, because that, Rory kicked out of the Baxter's Fist of the Future. Yes. Back. But anyway, I like it. Thank I like you. it. I don't know if I like Punk turning heel in it. Okay. Especially if it's if it might end up being, oh, Punk gets the win back. I don't think he needs to go. I don't think, I think your, your, um, your gear change from, from nice Punk to angry Punk is a bit, yeah. It could be a little bit, oh. Oh, a little little slower, a little slower. Oh. Like just have little flickers of punk slowly start to maybe go, hmm, this is quite yeah. annoying. I think I think the moment he loses, and then I don't think he straight away should come out and go, Oh, that was your fault. It yeah. should be a little bit like, All right, all right, okay, that's one night. Let's let's do it again. And yeah. then maybe lose again. And then he can start going, mm. Mm. That's, that's a good idea. That's it. But I, but you know, I like the idea of Kingston like battering and beating yeah. punk. Why Please not? Do. Why not? Do it. Why not? Let's do it. So cowards. it's a yes from you. It's a yes from it's me. It's a yes Ooh. from Tom. Thank you. When you started your pitch, first I was afraid. I was I was pensioned for everything. You might say. Um because I thought, oh, ooh, to beat him decisively and quickly mm. was a bit of a big step. Yeah. But then you justified it with your um like the reasoning behind it and yeah. punk being angry at the fans. I thought that was a really good detail. Because he it has gotten a little bit Saccharin yeah. recently. Oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. it really has. It has. Um, but no, I mean, we're, we're being hypercritical here. I'm still very much enjoying what Punk's yeah, doing. Yeah, of course. Really yeah. But maybe that's deliberately where they're going with it. And mm. I could well see something like this happening. I, I could see a loss triggering something in Punk, yeah. which leads to him saying pretty much exactly what you said. Like, the fans have made me soft. Mm. I need to rediscover the mm. old CM Punk. And I think that would be awesome. So it's a yes from me as well. Whoa, hey, thank you. Thank double you. yeses. Yeah. Woo. Um, my first pitch also concerns that match, so Punk versus Eddie Kingston. Um, I'm not going for quite the same result, though. Mm. Uh, when I looked at the, the reason for this pitch came when I just looked through the card thinking of ideas, and I noticed there's a lot of matches that I suspect are going to go really long, like the MMA lads versus the Inner, Inner Circle, Circle, maybe the six man with the Bucks and Cole against uh, Christian and Jurassic Express. Uh, and I just thought, oh, well... I would like it maybe if it was the other way around from what I suspect it might be, where these multi-man matches actually just bang, 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 loads mm. of big things happen, but it doesn't go too long. Mm. I could be proven wrong, but I feel as though they are. Whereas I'd like to see maybe the singles matches given a bit more time. I feel like either way we're in for a very long show, possibly. Yeah. But I think that a match that I would like to see develop and be drawn out is Punk versus Eddie Kingston. Um, I, I would like it to go, and I don't know if they do time limit stipulations on pay-per-view, but near like the 30 minute mark. Even mm. if they don't, you can, you can retcon that by just yeah. having Justin Roberts to start going with a 30 minute time yeah, limit. Yeah, very true. Done. Um, so I think that I'd like it to have a 30 minute time limit. As we get towards the end, and gradually throughout the match, you know, Kingston's proven that he is on Punk's level, and the Punk was wrong to, dis to disrespect him back in the day and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, but then Punk as well rediscovers something in himself. He's fired on all cylinders. And, and then it, towards the end, I feel like it should be that Punk has Kingston in the Anaconda Vice, but there's not long enough left to get Kingston to tap out. Like the clock, they're in the last like sort of 10, five seconds. And Kingston realizes this. And with his free hand, just like flips Punk off as the time runs out. Nice. As if to say, like, I'm not giving you the satisfaction of beating me. Um, I'm here to stay sort of thing, basically. That's great. Um, I think that this would... Because um, I've noticed that... An, Quite a few times now, Kingston's been the guy who passes out rather than taps out. Yeah. That's cool and everything, but at the same time, it it sort of has diminishing returns a little bit for me. So I think that's a twist on that mm. that would then lead to another match down the line. And then maybe, like, mm. we could, I didn't think of this before, but maybe go in like the same direction that Andrew said because I really like that. So that's my idea. They draw after a long match, and Kingston sort of flips him off spitefully to say like I'm not I'm not losing to you so I think you kind of mo you could mash, mesh those ideas yeah. I, want, yeah, I was I thinking like that as well that, then yeah. I think if anyone is going to do that justice is Eddie Kingston who yeah. the mindset of which would be like like I can't beat you but you're not going to yeah. beat me yeah yeah 
I just like that visual. Like I can in my mind palace. I can I can see like the middle finger from Kingston in the face of Punk and Punk's just like look of like horror as the timer runs out and he mm. knows like he can even crank it a little bit and he's still like no 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 yeah, I, I really like that which is the again it's a nice story and I got, and I hope that this isn't just the a, a one and done for Kingston yeah. Punk so I hope that they uh, they use a, a tool like that like the mm. time limit draw to to, to further it. It's obviously not what I think will happen. It's what I want to happen. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I can't see anything like this happening at all. Like, I feel like some bits of some matches are going to be mm. cut down mm. to make room for others. And I feel like this will get like maybe, you know, a good 20 minutes or so. But I I don't think this would ever happen, really. Mm. But I'd, I'd, I'd love for it to, obviously. Uh, it's a yes from me. Thank you very much. I love the visual. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a yes from me as well. Thank I think you, you got to like that point better than I got to it with the quick win. But your uh, aftermath was sick. Whoa. Mm. Well, like Tom said, let's just combine them let's together. Let's just smash them together. Let's but have a Megazord. I, 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 <laughs> I love it so much, though. I think that would be a perfect way to carry it on with Kingston just flipping off Punk without actually, you know, like... It or becomes anything. a motif as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think that time. would just be. I think that would be awesome, and then just leads to some more heated matches. Maybe we get more draws as well, and then we can finally have like a final one that oh. is just like a big, big. This is yeah. the decisive one. Let's go at it. What do you think? So I was gonna say, Tom, what's your next pitch for CM Punk? Let's just do this. Let's just put well, like, the just whole, the whole feud Punk. all the way through. But um, no, um, thank you very much. We've all. It's all yeses. So it's far. all yeses yeah. so far. Were you about to say something else? Or, oh, do, can you no, I'm having to move on to my second pitch. Can you pitch? reveal to us your second so, pitch? Please? My second pitch is to do with the FTR Lucha Brothers match okay. that we've got going down for the, the AAA tag titles. Or is it for the AEW tag titles? Oh, so the AEW tag titles, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's the AEW tag the titles AW. for I'll this I'll double one. check that while you go ahead. I, I think, okay, well, either way, this, this works for titles. both. Yeah, yeah. This works for both. I call this pitch the whole enchilada. No, oh. no, no, no. I call this pitch a hundred Las Superanas. <laughs> That's really good. The night of a hundred last <laughs> nice, Superranas. Nice, That's nice. really good. So we know the last Superranas thing that they it's, did. It's as it stands. It's for the AEW title. My thing. apologies, but this still works though. It okay. still works for what I want to achieve. So obviously the Superranas, the as the is FTR in in mm -hmm. uh, in their lucha gear. They, 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 they stripped their way to gold, and I like the idea of FTR and Lucha Brothers having this match. And whilst we will get some technical greatness. Let's fill it with some sports entertainment. Okay. Ooh. Um, we're gonna. So we have the as the match is in progress, uh, the Super Rounders do a run in and try and go for the Lucha Brothers. They're like, eh, but aren't they? Lucha Brothers send them away. Match carries on. A bit later, Super Rounders come from the crowd. Oh, they they went through the crowd this time. Clearly, batted away. They clear off. Happens again. Oh, the other side of the crowd, they're getting some steps in tonight, they are. <laughs> but then as you've got two Lucharanas on the apron, another two run down the ramp. Ooh. And so it's like, there's four. And then you have this moment where suddenly there's six, eight, ten, and the Lucha Brothers are fighting them off like they're the Putty Patrol in Power Rangers. <laughs> Just dropping them with, like, with drivers, hurricane runners, sending them back in. We could even have one big lad. I'm thinking in my head, like a wide boy dressed in the Super Rana's gear. And they, the commentator's going, we don't know who the real Super Rana's are. And they're all coming out in weird shapes and sizes. And FTR are having to, to bat them all away. Mm. You could lead this here. Oh, it's FTR having to bat them away. Sorry, sorry. It's last, sorry, Lucha sorry, Brothers. Sorry, Brothers. Yeah, Brothers. Lucha Brothers. No, no, FTR are just letting all this yeah, happen. Yeah. The FTR What's the all... referee doing? Uh, <laughs> referee is out cold. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. <laughs> Referee is a super honor. <laughs> oh! He rips off his face and there's a mask underneath. <laughs> what a dream. Um, and then you can have one or two conclusions here. You can either have it so in amongst all this chaos, FTR get a sneaky move in and beat the Lucha Brothers and go, ha ha, we are now AEW tag champions. Or it can be Lucha Brothers rising above the nonsense, mm. rising above the noise, sending all the super Ranas pack in and then beating decisively FTR. And then everybody can move on to other things. Mm. Thoughts. Well, it's very avant-garde. Thank you <laughs> very, very much. Avant -garde. It's very, it's very, um, like you know, like it's like a bit, it's like a piece of modern art that I don't quite understand. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about the reason. For, so it, it's well, like, just FTR just playing silly buggers and trying to. Who get, are all these friends of theirs? They just know just people. Friends. They just people. They just yeah. made some phone calls. Mum's um, dad puts, put something on on Craigslist. Or... <laughs> I mean, 
real, real I, free cycle. I enjoy the visual of it. Unfortunately, it's a no from me. Not because I dislike it, more because I'm scared of it. <laughs> I don't quite get it. Yeah, yeah. But if we if we if we ran from all the things we were scared of, hmm. we wouldn't have electricity. Okay. Oh fair enough. wow. Fair enough. Yeah. Just putting that wow. out there if you say no. <laughs> Just putting that out there. And with that analogy right there, I'm going to give it a yes. It, is, it gives me shades. It gives me shades of Jack. You weren't here the time we we had Tom on uh, last time. Okay. Um, Tom oh, did yeah. this insane <laughs> forbidden door pitch where literally he listed off. The, the history book of wrestlers. Of wrestling, right. And he just brought all these people in, and it reminded me of that pitch and how oh. grand and how insane it was. And uh, I just, wrestling. I didn't, I didn't end it with the aristocrats. This yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> you see, I, I never got that. And then I read the comments, and it was like, oh, oh I it's yeah, like, yeah. A, yeah. See, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Justin Henry taught me that joke. So Did he? Justin Henry for teaching I'm just me not that cultured. Joke. I'm just not cultured. You just, now you've got to hang out with Justin Henry more. He's do. off of America. <laughs> Is it yes from me, Tom? Is Yay! it yes from me? I also part of me wants part of me wants FTR to win to continue just this massive heat mm. of them having the AAA tag titles and the AEW tag titles and just being just being absolute meanies with both belts, keeping mm. them away from people. I like, yeah, and, and and this is a device if you wanted to use it that way for FTR to say we beat the Lucha Brothers, mm -hmm. but it wasn't with it wasn't without a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I love it. Um, well, thank you. I'll get I'll get one yes from that. That's fine. Uh, just because I'm afraid. Just because I'm afraid. Electricity. Electricity, Absolutely. Jack. Um, Andrew. Yes. What's your second pitch? Well, my second pitch is is going to be focusing on the Hangman and Omega match. Oh, oh here we go. Right. Uh, I think we all know it's going to be an incredible match, and I think the consensus is that. Hangman's gonna hold the belt at the end of the night, right? I think I think we're all leaning towards that being the outcome, at least anyway. I'm I'm really hoping that it is. Me too. Part of me is a little bit indecisive because I feel like if Daniel uh sorry, if Brian wins, then for the tournament. Yeah, 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 wins the tournament, then the rematch between him and Omega for the yeah. AEW. But we'll see, we'll see. I do think it'd be amazing if Omega won at the end and he was was closed it out holding the belt high. No, that wouldn't be amazing. That would be that would be sad. Why? For Hangman. Oh, sorry, I meant Hangman. Oh, right, that's I'm okay. That's fine. Fine. I knew what you okay. meant. He knew what I meant. Um, so anyway, yeah, after a hellacious match uh, between both men, there's loads of close calls and false finishes and all that. Hangman finally manages. They hit the bookshot lariat for the one, two, three. He lifts the belt, has an emotional moment, then turns towards Omega. His expression changes to one that's focused and enraged. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Hangman slowly approaches Omega, who is now slowly backing into the corner of the ring. But instead of throwing a fist, Hangman offers out his hand. Oh. Omega stunned. Doesn't quite know what to do, but after a brief moment of uh, of hesitation, he accepts Hangman's offering and shakes the hand of his former friend and goes to leave the ring. And I wrote, and then I wrote, it's like an anime because they all like their <laughs> anime stuff, right? <laughs> the arc has finished, and Hangman doesn't want to stoop to the levels of Kenny. Uh, instead, he acknowledges that you know him being cast out of the elite brought him to this moment of being the AEW champion. So as Kenny leaves up the ramp. Cole and the Bucks come out. They come to confront the friend, uh, comfort the friends. Only sorry, and uh, and after, you know he's just lost the belt. Friends, let's hug all together. They all embrace and then turn to face the ring as Hamman continues to celebrate. As Ke Kenny looks on at uh -oh. his former friend, uh -oh. a long tanned leg <laughs> extends with force as a boot collides with Omega's chin. Oh no, not the debut of Michael Tanleg. <laughs> oh no! Unfortunately unfortunately not. It's a super kick from Cole that connects. Whoa! Oh. The Bucks hoist Omega up to his knees. You said long leg. Six foot leg. <laughs> 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 On a good day. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, the Bucks hoist Omega up to his knees, hitting a BTE trigger whilst Cole fini uh, finishes off this onslaught with oh. a last shot. Oh. Cole stands over Kenny's lifeless body as he does his little pow pow finger guns down at his body and then he slowly pans up towards Hangman Page who's looking on there. Kenny Omega has been cast out of the elite. Oh. Echoes of Ring of Honor from that time. Mm. From what mm -hmm. Cole, they did a call. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did the same thing to oh. them, didn't they? They, uh, they super kicked Cole out of the group. Mm -hmm. I'm also 
sensing, I feel like I'm doing wine tasting. I'm also detecting undertones of uh, Omega and Ibushi's friendship. Yes. With Pangman and Omega. Also, you know. a little bit of the Undisputed Era in there as well. Ooh. Finn Balor is not going to oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of tying all these things together. And um, part of me does think that this would genuinely play out a lot longer because AEW do like to do the yeah. long-term storytelling towards them finally, I think. And I think it will eventually end up with Cole and Omega facing off and, like, booting out. And then perhaps Omega's redemption is him coming back together with Hangman and, mm. like, forming a friendship again and understanding what he did was wrong and everything. That'd be cool as well. Um, but, yeah, that's the that, that'd be that their pitch. I like it. Um, with one amendment, Ooh. I would change one thing. Go on. I would have this happen on the next Dynamite, I think. Yeah. Because I'd quite like, for if Hangman does win, for it to all be about mm -hmm. him and everyone mm -hmm. can just cry tears of mm -hmm. joy. But I don't mind too much it happening then or whenever. Yeah. Um, uh, I really like it. I also wouldn't mind if things went totally the other way and Omega had a big old breakdown. But this is an yeah. interesting twist on it. And just a little confession. I, I can't, I'm not fully on board with Kenny as a heel sometimes. Okay. I find him a bit melodramatic and a bit yeah. silly. I know that's the point, mm. but um, I'm starting to get a little bit tired of it. Mm. But, you know, not not like he needs to drastically turn now or anything. Yeah. But I like the idea of him kind of, you know, going back on his ways and mm. thinking, ah, you know what, it's fine. Yeah. And nice. I like Cole leading the group as well. Yeah. That would really elevate Cole's time. Oh, definitely. So it's a yes from me. Oh, thank you. Uh, similarly to um, <laughs> nice, similarly to uh, uh, Jack King, uh, I thought that it would be better to do that after mm. to have Adam Page have his moment. I think yeah. that's what we're all waiting for in it, just to have that. And I feel like all that other stuff might might take away. Yep. But it's very in keeping with like Bullet Club and Elite, the whole idea of you know you come to the end of a long title reign and they're like, well, you know, good to us now. Mm. Out you go, stitch stitch that, Jimmy. Um, so I'm, I'm, I like that. I like Adam, cause I feel like Adam Cole is kind of in the wings at the moment. Like yeah. he's yeah. there, he's not in the center. I feel like he will be keen to get into the center mm -hmm. if, it, and if this doesn't, if he doesn't lead uh, a coup, it will begin a power struggle post, uh, full gear for that yeah. top role. So I'm going to give you a yes no! as well. Ooh, I, Cause you. I like the, as long as it's not on the show itself, on the show, it's yeah. after mm. and we start to maybe, you know, and, and it, and it leads, it's Adam Cole leading a coup, uh, of the, of the super click slash elite. Maybe it's the end of the elite. Maybe the elite, maybe is, it is. Maybe Ooh. they drop off the whole elite. Oh, idea. They, they make too much money for that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, who would Cole be if the elite were the Spice Girls? He'd be like the third biggest one, maybe, or something Ooh. like that. I think he He's would not be... not Jerry. No. I think he'd be like... Not, uh, he'd be... Emma Bundy. Victoria Beckham. Oh, Victoria. Mm. Oh, yeah, she wasn't posh the biggest spice. at the time, mm -hmm. was she? Yeah, no. true. Yeah, but, true. She, but posh, posh Spice would end up doing arguably the least and making the most money. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that's in keeping for yeah. Adam Cole. You know, yeah. just go to NXT and have a couple of, have some phenomenal matches and make a bunch of money. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I like that. And then um, maybe they get... Who else would... So, who else would they... So, who would Scary Spice be? Uh... uh just for the hair, I'm thinking Kenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, that's um, a good point. I think I think Cole's like Mel C. Oh, whereas he's like the most talented, but we haven't seen that yet. Because Mel C uh. didn't get enough credit, man. Justice for Mel C. She had the best voice. In Adam Spice Cole Day. hasn't sang his Morning Star yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Is it Morning Star? I remember I turned to you. I have learned my lesson. I can't remember. Fear it's out there, I can tell. Don't look back at the other. You will not be able to get. And their lies. And goodbye. Northern Star. Northern Sorry, Star. Sorry, I had to sing <laughs> the whole Star. thing to remember it. Northern Star. But yeah, I think um, I turned to you as a, a banger too. Big trance anthem. Yeah, I can't even it. remember Turn these. To you, is this a Spice Girl song? Like it. No, it's a Mel C song. Uh, 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 Mel C song. Oh, oh, I have no solo idea. Solo joint from mm. Mel C. Fly straight over this bald head. And Mel B went to live me? with Patsy Kensit, as we all yes. remember. Oh yeah, from that documentary, Bo Selector. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it me? It's me. <laughs> or has the world just lost its head? <laughs> it, it is. It is you, sir. It's definitely you. My second pitch concerns MJF and Darby Allen, unfortunately. Which is going to be a big match between, as MJF keeps reminding us, two pillars Two pillars of AEW. I think now is the now is the time for... Page Brown. Yes. No, for a similarly big scary man to step into the spotlight. And his name is Wardlow. I think that MJF should try everything in his book to try and beat Darby Allen, including trying to get Wardlow involved. It doesn't quite work. Maybe he drops the diamond ring when he's passing it to him or something along those lines. 
Something that is Wardlow's fault, but if MJF was good enough, he would have just beaten Darby on anyway. So it's not really Wardlow's fault. It's mm. MJF's fault. Um, Darby beats him, celebrates off he goes. MJF's furious. We've seen him slap Wardlow before and like get angry at him, but this time he decks him with the dynamite diamond ring twice. I'm gonna say twice. I think twice. Because so, the first time That'll Wardlow kind of, and then MJF's like, I'll probably do another one. Bang. <laughs> And then realizes what he's done. Yeah, he stands over him, furious, and then he's like, oh, uh oh, oh. And then runs away. And then we wait until the next dynamite. And Jeff's hiding. Like, and, and we get maybe a few segments. It could last over maybe a couple of weeks even. Eventually, Wardlow does get his hands on MJF and is about to destroy him. But MJF is joined by the rest of the pinnacle in the ring. And they've like, no, look, we've realized what a valuable commodity you are to the pinnacle. We love you so much. We want to give you a big raise. We want to give you this and that and all these perks and stuff. And they're all there going like, and then Wardo does that. I was a, and they just rip oh, it off. Are you? They, ju they just rip it off. As you were saying it, I was thinking, this sounds like the day <laughs> Batista yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you did that. Yeah. <laughs> Wardlow's like, I like that. No, destroys them all. Big match with MJF where he destroys him. I don't think that would damage MJF too much because, no. you know, he's always going to be able to get his heat back mm -hmm. with his mic skills. But for now, I think this might be Wardlow's time. The bit that I haven't kind of filled in is what happens afterwards. What does he do? Yeah. Maybe he goes after, I don't know, like the, the TNT title maybe. Although, mm. I don't know, maybe he has... World title. Oh, I, I think yes. his, his first feud could be Powerhouse Hobbs maybe. Just two Ooh, big lads. I that's don't know. That's a good but, idea. Um, that's that's my pitch anyway. Well, this is it because you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna launch uh, Wardlow, you've got to have a, a next thing planned. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, if you're gonna make him the next day Batista. Oh, music from Saliva for a start. <laughs> oh, Tony <laughs> Khan is <laughs> loving this. I'll wager. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's good. Thank you. Um, I just oh, I I don't know whether I am all on board with. With, with, with strapping the rocket okay. to Wardlow. Um, no diss to Wardlow. I just, I think with Dave Batista, I don't, I, maybe, maybe I'm missing something on Dynamite TE uh, where I'm, I'm not hearing the, the rousing pops and, and, and support for Wardlow as I was hearing for Big Dave yeah, 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 in 05. Yeah. Like with that, it was like inevitable that like you could hear the crowd starting to get more and more behind Batista. Mm. So when that happened, like, oh, it was, I remember watching Raw that night when <laughs> he did that. I was like, yeah! Yes, a star is born. Uh, I don't get that vibe from Wardlow right now. Mm. It's so for that, it's going to be a no from no me. No worries at all, Tom. Um, but hey, it's no, no harm in making new non WWE stars in AEW. Mm. Yeah, there's always room for more of those. Maybe one for the future. Maybe one Maybe for the right future now. for down the line. I'm. Uh... Easy to please because okay. that's a big. I, I <laughs> well, mean, it, I, well, there's a surprise, that's what everybody. I heard. There's a, <laughs> careful now. He's made a dirty. He's made a dirty made a joke. Dirty a dirty okay. joke. Uh, it's a yes from me because it's about time. Wardlow did something. Oh, oh. He's 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 a, he's <laughs> you a lazy little. bugger. <laughs> he's not in that way, but do the he's dishes. slob. Look at him. He, he, the state of it. He's he's a a up. He never washed. Not. Up. He's he's just a bit. He, even I'd be like, oh, it's time to do something now. This fella's pushing me about. Come on now, Wardlow's <laughs> this big boy. It's, they, it's time for him to like. There was a little bit of what, like months ago now, where yeah. they were having a bit of an argument. And MJF was like, "Remember who feeds your family, who mm. pays your wages? It's me." Mm. And I think that's the reason why he hasn't done anything for a while. But yeah, I think I, th I think it's just about time he needs to, to do something. And I think, um, sort of going off what Tom was saying, I think the pop would come, and the push would come from. After him doing that, like him finally breaking away, and maybe then everybody kind of like maybe starts rallying be behind him. If I could change my, maybe mm. maybe I would have put more of a gap between MJF like betraying him, yeah, and Wardlow getting his revenge. Maybe that's where the support builds. Yeah, him could, chasing that's a good him. idea actually. Maybe, yeah. That's a really good idea. But I think that the idea and the premise of finally Wardlow just having enough of MJF mm -hmm. is like I think it really needs to happen, mm. and perhaps pretty soon as well. For me personally, anyway. Yeah, but, fair yeah. enough. It's a yes from I like. I, I enjoy how you you say like he needs to be doing something. You're talking you're like Wardlow, like like a teenager that just hasn't got a job no. and that. doesn't pay rent. You need to be doing something, not, young man. Not in that. Not in that sense. More of Where's like your ambition. More of like MJS just pushing play him about all day. MJS just pushing him about and he's doing nothing. I'm imagining he's just absorbing I'm imagining him. going home like, to, the, come on. to the Wardlow household where his parents, who both look remarkably like him, are like, <laughs> so just you need, to do some, yeah. <laughs> you need to do something with your life. Um, 
<laughs> but yes, that was my that was my second pitch. Now, Tom, if we could have your third and final pitch, Ooh. please. Okay, my third and final pitch. Mm-mm. Hunter Horse Helmsley Jr. Horse. 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 Hunter Horse Helmsley. Hunter Horse Helmsley Jr. I know what this is going to be. But carry on. I won't say what I think. So the whole thing with, with is the Hangman page. Yeah. Oh, viewed. no. Uh, it's, it's, it's a long-term story being told. Mm. It's, been, it's something that's been spun out for over a year. And we're getting little nods to things in the past. And I feel like this is the right time to, 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 to pay homage to a big part of Hangman Page's history. Now, unfortunately, we can't do it the proper way because Hunter Horse Helmsley, the horse that Adam Page rode out on at All Out 2019, is no longer with us. The horse, oh. the horse, the horse died, sadly. Oh. Kenny, uh, Page put a thing about it on his Twitter a while ago. So, what we do... I've made a huge mistake, by the way. I forgot that that was the actual name of the horse. The horse is called <laughs> Hunter Horse I, Helmsley. I thought you were going to do something where you turned Page into Triple H <laughs> and made him... Into made a him horse. Like, no, not into a horse. Not actually into a horse. But sorry, no. So I'm, I'm much more at ease now. Write that down. Turn him into <laughs> Triple H slash horse. A horse, yeah. Um, so what we have is we have Hangman Page come out to the ring, walks out to the ring, and then goes, hmm, something missing. And then he brings out a foal... Oh. A baby horse who is announced as Hunter Horse Helmsley Jr. Oh. The son, the child <laughs> that was that was the, the, the mother and fathered, mainly fathered by Hunter Horse Helmsley. And it is the next generation of Hunter Horse Helmsley. And he is ringside for the big moment. It calls back to the horse that rode, that Hangman rode out in 2019. You know what? You even have a spot where the tiny horse distracts the ref. <laughs> <laughs> allows Adam Page to get a near fall off a, off a, off a oh. shot with a hoof or something. Okay. Oh my okay. god! I like the idea of some way having the having the horse involved, uh, having maybe just may, I think just having like what you do is you conceal some hay in the apron, mm. so you have him walk up and start chewing the apron. And the rest comes over and goes, "You can't be chewing the apron!" To which Adam Cole like <laughs> clatters him oh with a hoof, god. <laughs> gets a near fall off it because the horse knows to step away and go, "Go, Adam, go!" <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's my pitch. That's a pitch. <laughs> wow. Hunter Horse Helmsley how, Jr. How do you want me to say no? I can't say no to this. Yeah. I challenge you to say no, no to say a no baby to horse, exactly. you monster. Oh. What am I going to say? No, I don't want the, the late Hunter Horse Helmsley to be honoured by his son appearing. <laughs> I, I, also think, I also think we should put um, Hunter Horse Helmsley into the Hall of Fame. The Horse of Fame. Horse of Fame. The Horse of Fame. The Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. There's various puns that <laughs> we can make, and we do have a wonderful time, but I'm just going to... We do have a wonderful time. We do have time. a great time. No one likes a good laugh more than I do, apart but, from my wife and some of her friends. Let's be serious for a moment. Um, <laughs> All right, lads. I know. I do have to. Um, I do have to give it a yes because what do you want me to do? You've backed me in a corner. I have indeed. I have a... I like a like a horse in a corner. Yes. Oh. You can't bolt. So I'm gonna. I'm, it's not gonna be a nay from me. It's gonna oh. be. Oh. It's gonna be a yes. Oh, damn. No. Sadly, I haven't got enough points to win, uh -huh. but I'm happy with a yay going... from you, sir. Uh, Andrew, are you going to say no to a horse? I don't. Put this on me. The only Are the you going to look at gift horse in the, the only, mouth? The only thing I would say <laughs> no to. Nay to. It, nay to, sorry. Is the uh, I'm not a big fan of animals. What? Play, not not I, clip no, that. No, don't clip that. Clip I'm that. not a big fan oh. of animals coming down to the too. ring. Like when I Pharaoh feel was, so yeah, sorry yeah. for Pharaoh. I felt yeah. so sorry for the camels and everything yeah. as well at, at, at Saudi. Uh, that's the only thing. But then part of me is like, yeah, get a horse in, let him do a bookshot lariat lari off back at us. <laughs> <to> <laughs> like, Finally get the one, two, three oh, on Omega. My, my thinking would be that Hunter Horse Helmsley Jr. is only a foal, so. Paige couldn't ride him to the ring. He'd have to walk alongside him. Like Maybe it's the on the pyro, ramp. Maybe no there's pyro, the ramp bit, though. You know, yeah. like, they've yeah. got the elevated ramp, and he could stand on top of the horse. There you go. Like, I mean, yeah, you can do that. That's quite a nice idea, yeah? It's quite a nice so idea. So with that idea thrown in there, I'd say yes. Buckshot Larry off the horse. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, there we go. Hangman puts the sword back in the Temple of Time and turns into <laughs> child him, and then he can ride the horse. Oh! With yeah. the Legend oh of Zelda God. reference, Ocarina yeah. of Time, you yes. maniac. This yes. is good. Hated that game. <laughs> oh, it, it, I remember watching you get f more frustrated as it got progressively harder. I think it, was, I, it was probably the saddest part of lockdown for me, was trying to get my <laughs> head around it? Ocarina of Time. Oh. It's, it's going, that's, that's meant to be a child's game. It's I know. So the water no, temple right. is ridiculous. The, the, but diff there's so many different commands for different things. It's just, be, it's just the, the N64 hey kids, controller. Assign your three most useful 
gadgets to the wheel. <laughs> to the wheel. <laughs> and don't press the wrong one. <laughs> Teach yourself how to... Anyway, I'm, quite, I could, I'm getting... So, are I you had, okay? When I was a kid, when I was that age, when I was the age of a lot of kids playing Ocarina of Time that I, that I spoke to, I was playing like Postman Pat on the AMS. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. GTA with Postman uh, Pat. And it's <laughs> the, the layout of the dungeon is so confusing. Yeah. And you only get the map when you find it in mm-hmm. one of the rooms. Yeah. Here's the map. Is it, it, is it easy to understand? It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Understand. Okay, you need to use the map. Where's the map? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll find it. Oh, <laughs> oh. God. Legend of Zelda. Andrew, so what's yes. your second? It is good. Hunter Horse Helmsy Jr., two Ooh. yeses. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're getting yes from me. Yes. Yes. Come on, yes. Hunter Horse Helmsy Jr. Uh, it's a, I, so I was thinking of this one, how to implement this person into AEW. And I don't think I've got a solid way of doing it, but this is, this was the idea. This you put Hunter Horse Helmsy Jr. as well, have you? Oh. So I'll, I'll go now, because that was that's the one. No, <laughs> right. So we come to the inner circle in American Top Team Street Fight, and uh, I think this would probably be the best way for this person to come into things at this point in time. Um, so everybody in that match starts off in the ring, and Top Team and inner circle, are, they're looking ready to go. Ethan Page has come out in his ring gear. You know, a street <laughs> fight. That's not That doesn't happen in a street fight. Man. He's ready to go. He's, like, proper ready to get just grapply, grapply down a day. Um, he wants to flex them muscles off, you know. He's just because he's a he's a he's a handsome boy. Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah, handsome yeah. boy. Uh, Aubrey Edwards is officiating this one as well, and she's trying to keep the frantic action as orderly as she possibly can. God, I hate my writing, mate. No, that's good. That nice. Why is that's that bad? That's nice. That's good. Frantic action. The frantic action. Paint the picture. <clears throat> Will it be in a street fight? Obviously, the match spills out around the arena. Uh, at one point, we get some members just breaking off into groups to have mm. fights and stuff. And Paige is going one-on-one with Sammy because obviously they had a little thing with the TNT Championship at the moment with Aubrey watching over them. And as the two are fighting, we see Aubrey briefly check her phone for a second before popping it back into her pocket. Oh. She doesn't take any notice of, of what's just occurred on a mobile or telephone device. It buzzes again. She checks her phone, this time looking a little bit more intently at what's uh, appeared on the screen before faintly hearing a voice bellow down the corridor, Aubrey Housen, check your cellular device. <laughs> it's a yes from me. A very nice, very <laughs> yes injured from me. Dan Housen comes speeding down the corridor in his wheelchair towards Aubrey, phone in hand. So they're backstage now. Yeah, this is them fighting like, in the arena. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan Housen then proceeds to ask Aubrey whether she checked her phone. She did, but she didn't see the problem. Dan Housen then proceeds to tell Aubrey, look, all Ethan, <laughs> all Ethan Egon Page, he's not wearing the appropriate attire for a street fight. He's in his ring gear. Where's his jeans? Where's his Danhausen branded shirt from ProWrestlingTees.com? He's cheating. Danhausen said he'd contract Aubreyhausen if there was cheating. And uh, Aubrey's a little bit hesitant to begin with. She's not too sure what to do until Ethan starts approach- approaching Danhausen with violent intent. Oh. oh. Aubrey, she quickly stops Ethan from doing anything, mo- making any sort of contact with Danhausen. But then Ethan starts giving her some back chat, asking, yeah, what, what are you going to do about it? And then, uh, so after this confrontation, Aubrey's like, she shrugs it off and she just does a hand rolly thing and she's like, go get changed. Oh. And, uh, and 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 that's it. Dan Housen has saved full gear. <laughs> <laughs> by, by enforcing by, the attire. Yes. Rules. It's a yes Housen. Dan it's, Housen. It is 100% a yes Housen from me. Yay. Anything that incorporates Dan Housen. Um, bless him. Support him on uh, support him on his oh, merch because he's injured at the oh, moment. Oh, Dan Housen t-shirt Look for this pitch. Yes. Go and support the boy. Very he's nice, a good boy. Very evil. We love him so much. Love this is Dan, Dan Housen. Housen. Now, I need to ask before I give it the yes that I'm surely going to give it. Yeah. I'm not fully up on the lore of Danhausen. Okay. I've seen a bit with him and Aubrey where he's, he's she doesn't, he, 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 like, he wants her to, like, disqualify him if he swears in a match that she's so, officiating. And now recently there's been one where I think it was in, like, a Max Caster match or something. Danhausen was tweeting Aubrey being like, uh, he's cheating during the commercial break. You got to disqualify him, <laughs> and and she was like, okay, okay, I'll definitely do that. And then Dan Housen was like, make sure you keep your phone on you at all times <laughs> in the match, and I'll tell you when he's cheating. So I was like, let's try and incorporate that into it. Is Dan somehow. Housen's gimmick? What if like a horror movie villain was really nice? <laughs> I feel like it he's is. very nice, very evil. Yeah, very yeah. nice, very evil. Dan yeah. Housen's gimmick is he's Dan Housen. Yeah, yeah. yeah and no one else is like him. It's a yes from me. It, oh, obviously, yay! Thank you. Um, Double yes, Housen. Yes, Housen. 
Double Horsehausen. No, what am I talking about? Oh, no. He's with Double Horsehausen. Horse, double Horsehausen. Dan Horsen. <laughs> <laughs> he can collect teeth with, with Britt with Baker. Baker. Yeah, exactly. When you mentioned uh, him this, earlier, I was like, oh, dentist, he knows. Dentist lady, lady, dentist these, lady, give me teeth housing. Yeah. <laughs> these pictures are all taking place in the same universe. I think. <laughs> they are. Um, my, mine is about um, the... We're going back to your first one, I believe. Uh, the, the women's title match. Britt mm-hmm. Baker, DMD. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD Dumbledore. versus Tay Conti. Tay Conti. Um... I think that this match should end when Tay Conti is... No, I think... Hmm, should Britt win or should she do it with help? Uh, either way, th- after the match, Tay Conti needs to get beaten down. Uh, no, sorry, Britt Baker needs to get attacked. I've got this wrong, I'm sorry. Ooh. Britt Baker wins. Mm-hmm. When she's celebrating afterwards, she is taken out. Jamie Hayter and Reba have already been uh, like ejected from the match by the referee, so they're not around to help her. She gets beaten down by... Who's that? It's Chelsea Green, right? Ooh. She beats down Britt Baker. They've got history. They used to be tag partners on the indies. Um, she beats her down, and then out comes Matt Cardona, and they're just in the ring like, yes, yes. Chelsea... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chelsea Green gets on the mic and says, right, listen up, Britt. I want a mixed tag match at the next pay-per-view between me and my boyfriend, Matt Cardona, mm. and you and your boyfriend, Tony Schiavone. And at the, in the no! main of... And, and in the main event of the... I've swerved you all. Yeah. In the main event of the next pay-per-view, Tony Schiavone batters <laughs> Matt Cardona <laughs> and Chelsea Green. He beats up both of them. Who cares? On his wow. own. Britt doesn't even get off the apron. Tony's kicking ass. He wins. <laughs> two beers. All the rest of it. That's, but that's not until That's not until uh, Revolution 2022. So. <laughs> Long term story. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah. The main the main event as I well. I love it. You, you yeah. have to build to the greatest night in the history yeah, of our do. sport. Oh, it would be the greatest. It would be the greatest night, <laughs> night in the history of our sport. He can at one point leave the ring and get on the headset and say it himself about his own performance. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd love that. Mm. As long as you 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 have it. So Chelsea Green says. Me and my boyfriend versus you and your boyfriend, mm. and don't oh, mention yeah, who yeah. Yeah. until the pay per view. They go, <laughs> oh. meet my boyfriend. Yeah. Did, so, you know it's all about the greatest night of the history of our sport. Tony Schiavone, biggest pop. If you do it that way, yeah, yeah. where you where like you you're not lying because you are. It's a yes from me. <laughs> that, that 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 works with me. It's a yes from me. A yes from me. I That's I can't. Stunning. I just, that would be so good, wouldn't it? Tony beating up like legitimate wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. I, and <laughs> and, and that would be so good because like I think Matt Cardona at the moment he's doing incredible stuff and uh-huh. I like I oh, love everything that he's doing. Please don't engage with it seriously. Doing. Please don't. Uh, why not? Oh, I it was want, obviously I silly. Like, I think I'm engaging be, with I think it seriously. Be good fun. They can ride out and hunt horse hells, Junior. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it would be just be good fun to see Tony bar him. Yeah. I think it'd be really funny to see that. Can't think what Tony's moveset would be. Just the same as Stone Cold. So yeah. Stunner, <laughs> best press. Stunner. I think it's the same as Jim Ross because they're the same character. So you have to press right C to get to him. It goes Jim Ross, Michael mm. Cole, Tony Giovanni, Earl Hebner on the character select screen. Yes. Um, <laughs> his finisher would definitely be a stunner, I feel. Yeah. Um, I think he would do... Um, He'd do like an... I, would he not do Britt Baker's finisher? Just for the band? <laughs> Lockjaw. Lock the Lockjaw. The greatest hold in the history of our sport. The double lock, come on, the stereo lock jaws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lovely, that's a lovely. <laughs> he does like that Chad Gable rolling suplex. <laughs> it's, it's a big E. Chaos theory, Chaos theory for you yeah. Doug Williams fans out there. They're, um, they're celebrating after, it's like Macho and Elizabeth. No, it's like Hogan and Elizabeth. She jumps <laughs> in his arms. He's all like, yeah. It's like Angle and Stephanie. Do you remember when Angle and Stephanie were celebrating after mm. a win? Triple H was fuming. Adam Cole comes out on the ramp. He's like, and it leads to the match we all want the most, Adam Cole versus mm-hmm. Tony Schiavone. I, Britt Baker <laughs> on a forklift, in honor of Judy Bagwell, of course. Um, but this was, sorry, I meant Hogan and Elizabeth this time. Mm. Ah, yeah. that makes so, sense. Oh, okay. Adam yeah. Cole is macho man. Mm. Right. Tony Schiavone is Hulk Hogan. <laughs> 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 and, and what better way to end it? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, Perfect. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for thank joining you. And thank you, everybody, for watching as well. Hey, you know what would be fun? Why don't you leave your pictures in that comment section down below? Uh, and we'll read them, and we'll, you know, critically engage with them as well. We might, we might do that. Um, I've been told not to go in the comment section anymore. So. Oh, <laughs> um, Hi, if you're there. <laughs> I can't see. Where's Tom? <laughs> uh, Full Gear is this Saturday, yep. I believe. Um, uh, there'll be coverage from Cultaholic as per usual. Are you doing anything special for it, Tom? Um, I, I'm sure there'll be things. I'm sure Watch things. Uh, at Cultaholic live reactions. Yeah, I'm sure mm-hmm. there will be. I've not actually heard anything, <laughs> but I'll, I'll promise that anyway. Yeah. 
Um, I'm sure Live someone reactions will be doing. I, from will, someone. It won't be me because I'll be doing a what happened that video, what which happened I'll at? be you know writing during and then recording after. Uh, so that should be out after full gear. Uh, Andrew, uh, there will be cut down reactions with me and Ross on Sun. Well, we'll be recording them. Sorry, on Saturday because yeah. it's a Saturday pay per view, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we'll be doing it Saturday, and they'll be going up. I assume early on next Monday. week, probably. Yeah, sometime early next week. Yeah. 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 Monday or Tuesday, yeah. one of the days. Um, excellent stuff. It's going to be exciting. Uh, but it will be more exciting if all our pitches came true. Uh, <laughs> and on that moral, on that happy ending, thank you for joining us. Stay safe out there. Stay very positive indeed. Yeah. And we'll see you very soon. How is it?